Radio Raheem here with the third installment of Ip Man, Ip Man 3 with Mike Tyson and Donnie Yin. Mike Tyson plays a construction worker who comes to an Asian town, tries to take it over. We talk to Donnie, we talk to Mike. They have amazing insight on the film. We're going to show it to you right now. Morning, guys. Radio Raheem. Hey, Radio Raheem. What? God, that's the that Spike movie. That's right. Um, you know, I noticed the cultures between uh, boxing and martial arts are somewhat similar in that this is a master pupil kind of storyline, and many boxers come up young uh, under the tutelage of trainers. Obviously, the story, the uh, custom model with yourself, Mike. How did that kind of uh, storyline and culture of martial arts speak to you? In, was that a way for you to connect with the film and uh, the plot? Well, um, the whole, um, I mean, as far as the whole barometer of just um, being in the role as the student or the pupil, whatever, you, I, I have that down to the pack. I know that, I know that, I know the bow down, I know the master's the master. I just know the master's the master, and I know that whole, um, the whole, that, like I said, the whole duration of um, the acting, I just know I could play that role. I just know this is the role where it calls to be a lot humble. It shows more humbleness. And that's why only the greatest fighters are the most humblest, because they know what it's like to get their ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> For you, there's a lot of fighters out there, you know, with names. Obviously, Mike is an icon. How did you decide on Mike Tyson, and what did you think he would bring to the role that no other boxer could? I've always been a big fan of Mike, you know. I mean, he's, he's legend, you know. For me, it was a total honor and a thrill to be able to not only work with Mike, but also fought in, uh, in, in my third installment. So uh, hopefully, Mike, you're going to return for the fourth installment. God willing, you know, I don't know what the future holds. I just want to live through today. <laughs> and lastly, guys, the uh, hologram issue has been, um, a lot has been made of it. People thought we might see a Bruce Lee hologram and you ended up having to hire an actor. You know, you, I, I wanted to see that happen, but that's between the producers and the Bruce Lee's uh, estate, you know, and uh, it didn't happen, but uh, I think this actor who uh, really, his, he really looked like Bruce Lee and he did a wonderful job, you know, so whatever is worth, you know, I think uh, this is the best uh, Beside the real Bruce Lee, this is the best you can get. Thank you. Radio Rahim. Radio Rahim. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tommy, congratulations for this year you have a great film for this. You can do that. Um, after this, I was just wondering, because this one has a lot of action, but for the uh, Crouching Tiger, uh, mm. that one, uh, also the wrong one, do you also have a chance to do a different style of it's to They're totally different. Very, Very different. different. Crouching Tiger is more of a short movie, you know, long hair. <coughs> Like you're saying, flying up the roof and doing all kinds of uh, 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 ballistic, uh, graceful movements uh, uh, against gravity, uh, but Rogue One, Star Wars universe. So that's very different. For an, for an actor, I'm very fortunate and blessed that uh, I was given the opportunities uh, of these three uh, such uh, different uh, roles and movies. Uh, we haven't actually seen you in the U.S. Uh, in the American films for a long time. I was wondering why you chose to join the I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, I never really purposely uh, to, oh, I'm going to be in an American film. I want to be in an American film, so I want to be in a Chinese film. You know, for me, I want to be in the films that I feel is appropriate, that carry the proper message, beside being the business side of it, the artistic side of it. But for me, it's very important to, to choose a film and to play a role that can represent in, in, uh, represents in a way where, uh, I've, as an actor, I feel certain social responsibility, you know? So therefore, I like to use film as a powerful, as it is, as a powerful platform. I want to use film as a platform to carry out these positive images, to, especially to children. I can't. I can't really say. I can't really say. <laughs> but it's going to be a great film. Okay, thank you. And just a very quick follow-up from Mike. Did you get hurt when you... Well, I broke my finger. Oh, yeah. Is that like a because of he... he, he, he well, no, totally. I, 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 I can't touch Mike, you know? I hit him. him. I hit him. I'm David. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's been about three years since you 
over 20 years since he last worked with action choreographer. Mm -hmm. more, more than 20 years. More yeah. than 20 years? Yeah. So how, how is his life finally you know, getting back together? Uh, you know, it's funny, right? Uh, uh, the last time I worked with him was 20 something years ago. And then uh, it, it didn't feel like it was that long. If maybe because I grew as a filmmaker, as, as an action director myself, and, and, and he's been watching my films, it's kind of like, and I've, of course I've been studying his films as well, you know, so this time around it was more of a mutual, it's like, you know, we hung out yesterday and we are reuniting again, you know, to be better. I mean, you've seen the film, so the work speaks for itself. That's awesome, awesome. Yes, thank you. And um, since you, um, with SPL2, since you didn't do that one, is there any chance there might be a, you know, sequel to maybe Flashpoint, something more contemporary? Yeah, I'm going to produce Flashpoint too. Yeah. Oh, so that's, so that's, so that's, uh, yeah. wow, wow, okay, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my question is for both of you, um, what's the meaning of martial arts for you and boxing for you? I don't know, and so many different, um, the degrees of it from a spiritual perspective, from a human perspective, from a physical perspective. I guess um, I, 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 people call me box. I call myself a fighter. My whole life I'm just a fighter. And, um, and I learned the art of fighting is not fighting. And that's the real art of fighting. But sometimes we don't always master arts, do we? Yeah. Well, I, I grew up in, as a martial artist. You know, my mother teaches martial arts. And fortunately, I can use the the upbringing in art into uh, it turn into a career, not intentionally, but everything happened for a reason. I, you know, my backstory. You know, I was brought into the industry. I was discovered by Yumo Ping some 33 years ago, right? And then I never stopped working. Right? Very blessed. So for me, it's it's it's, it's all part of the destiny, part of my life. This this is my life, and it's part of the destiny. And you both guys had like troubled teenage experience. So what's uh, you know the this life experience? What did you learn from that experience? How what do you say to younger you at this 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 time of your life? A younger me. Younger you at okay. the time. So it's like a. Well, I have life. to I have <laughs> to say from the relationships that I have with my son that. I might have told, a younger me might have told me today, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm dealing with now, so. And I'm saying to myself, his friends, any other kid would listen to me because of the dread, but he doesn't. And that just means that he is just so stupid. <laughs> He's just so stupid, I just worry about my son. <laughs> uh, pretty much same with Mike, but more of a reserve way. <laughs> How the, the, the who is having hard time, so what do you, do you tell them? As a parent, as a father, I'm still learning every day, you know, it's, 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 it's tough to grow up in, in society today, you know, and it's tough back then, it's even tougher now, so I can't, I don't know all the answers, right, and I'm trying to explore, no blueprint, you know, buddy. right, mm -hmm. so I'm just learning as, as they grow, and I'm growing with them. Thank you. Ooh, um, Donnie, how do you like being uh, more recognizable now in the United States than before because you're making that transition to the American market? I think it's always a plus, you know, to, uh, to uh, have more and more people uh, appreciate your film. I mean, that's what we, that's our objective, you know, to make a film it, is to share in such a mass uh, uh, target audiences, right, you know. And the world is getting smaller and smaller. So it's not Chinese or or um, whatever you know. It's, it's if if a film uh, done properly, you know that's that's the whole objective. Is hopefully everybody can appreciate the, the value of the film itself. And like you've been reimmortalized in another video game. You're in UFC too. How yeah, does that's pretty. Back to yeah. the digital market. <laughs> hey, only at the moment, only I could do is just be grateful at the moment. I'll have a. Um, I'll have something to say for it later. Right now, I'm just sucking it in. Okay. And how hard did you learn the Chinese lines? It wasn't hard at all because uh, <clears throat> once you do it, um, if you do it phonetically for me to spell it, I, I'll pass a Harvard test then. <laughs> <laughs> if you spell it out like that, then I'll just, yeah, I'll pass.
Nice, thank you. Okay, well, one question for each of you. Uh, Donnie, this is your fourth <coughs> film with uh, Wilson Yip. Since you have such a camaraderie. That's just a six foot. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. What are the easiest parts of filming with someone that you've filmed with a uh, number of times before, and what are the hard parts when you work together so often? Uh, we don't have a hard part. Uh, I always enjoy working with him, and uh, he's a very timid, shy person. He doesn't really, uh, he's not very expressive. So as an actor, if you don't know him, sometimes you, you really can't get a clear understanding of his directions. But I do know him, so it's, it's, we don't really, he doesn't have to explain to me. I can see, like, oh, is that what you want? Because, yeah, kind of that direction, and he's, oh, yeah. And then, you know, it's, there's no downside, so um, I'm going to continue working with him. And Mike, of course, we know you from your huge history in boxing and your impact on the sport. When choreographing the fight scenes for the movie, how difficult was it for you to maneuver so you could hurt somebody? Not too hard. I'm, I'm a professional. It's very good control. I'm not going to make any mistakes. If anything, I'm going to get hurt. The opponent, the person in front of me, is not going to get hurt. How, what was a typical scene like when you were filming the fight scenes? Like how, for those of us who don't act Long that, scenes, real long mm -hmm. fight scenes. And not many cuts, so the scenes were prolonged. It was the best. It was the best I ever did in a movie. If, if I say which is the best movie, which is the most simplistic, but I've gotten the most out of, out of it from you know um, educational perspective, I would say um, this movie right here. I left this movie saying, "Hey, I got something. I'm more than what I was when I came here." Radio Raheem with Mike Tyson and Donnie Yip for Ip Man Three.